transition team is allegedly putting together a list of military officers who could potentially lose their jobs. Now, as part of this, there could be a review of the handling of the U.S. military pork from Afghanistan in 2021, and some officers may even face court-martial. NBC said this, the Trump transition team is compiling a list of senior, current, and former U.S. military officers who were directly involved in the withdrawal from Afghanistan and exploring whether they can be court-martialed for their involvement, according to a U.S. official and a person familiar with the plan. Keep in mind, this is NBC, and they're citing anonymous sources, and we know how that often goes, but hear me out. They say this. They say officials working on the transition are considering creating a commission to investigate the 2021 withdrawal from Afghanistan, including gathering information about who was directly involved in the decision-making for the military, how it was carried out, and whether the military leaders could be eligible for charges as serious as treason, the U.S. official and person with knowledge of the plan said. Now, they note it is being framed as a review of how, of how the U.S. first got into the war in Afghanistan and how the U.S. ultimately withdrew. They note that NBC News did reach out to, a, to multiple officials on the Trump transition team about the story. One of them said, quote, the sources apparently pushing the story appear to be your typical selfish Washington, D.C. insiders seeking to gain better positions for their own administration jobs, said an individual with knowledge of the campaign. Now, we'll see where this goes, whether it's true or not. One thing we can say for sure, Trump has been a very vocal critic of the pullout from Afghanistan. He believed our troops deserved a better ending to that war, especially those who lost their friends <coughs> or were injured or who really believed in fighting there and believed in what we were doing. Uh, he believed it was a slap in the face to the veterans. Trump has also noted, as have many conservatives, that allowing the Taliban to get hold of all this U.S. military equipment was a very terrible move uh, because we essentially armed the Taliban, and mm -hmm. the Taliban was allowed to take over. Uh, they rolled in, again, you know, the entire Afghan government was overthrown within just a couple days uh, of the U.S. pulling out. Uh, and also, of course, there was the issue with the withdrawal itself and the fact that they didn't get the civilians out before the troops out. Another move that many would say was problematic because it led to a lot of people getting killed, especially U.S. informants. So, look, in other words, the idea that the officers in the United States could be court-martialed for this or might face some charges, even something as serious as treason, that is a rumor. But... There are other reports saying that the Trump team may be looking to just fire some of them in the Pentagon. The firings are very likely. The firing them is going to be very likely because they're saying this across the board. Court martial, maybe. Now, Reuters says this. They say members of President-elect Donald Trump's transition team are drawing up a list of military officers to be fired, potentially to include the Joint Chiefs of Staff, two sources said, and what would be an unprecedented shakeup of the Pentagon. It's not really unprecedented, hear me out, because Obama fired a lot of them. Uh, but hear me out, because I'll get into that. Now, if they note that one of the sources questioned, by, questioned the feasibility of a mass firing at the Pentagon. It was also unclear if Trump himself would endorse the plan, although in the past he has railed extensively against defense leaders who have criticized him. They know that Trump has also spoken during the campaign of firing woke generals and those responsible for the troubled 2021 pullout from Afghanistan. Now, look, on the point of whether this would be possible, it very likely could be. Remember, we saw something very similar happen under Barack Obama when he was president. Uh, you might even rem remember some of that. Yeah, I remember. Firing generals. Who <laughs> Uh, for example, if you remember General Stanley McChrystal, General Stanley McChrystal, who had a Rolling Stones article where he got drunk with his, you know, guys around him, and he said some, he had some criticisms of Obama, Obama fired him over that. And so suggesting that the president would fire a general for being critical of them, this is not new. There is a legal backing to that as well. The president of the United States is, of course, the... Um, you know, the commander in chief, it is actually against the law for military, for, you know, U.S. service members to criticize the commander in chief. They can't do it. 
Now, have a look at this from back in 2013. This was under the Obama administration. Investors Business Daily, there was a lot of reports on this. They said Obama's military coup pur purges 197 officers in five years. And they say what the president calls my military is being cleansed of any officers suspected of disloyalty to or disagreement with the administration on matters of policy or force structure, leaving, the compli leaving me compliant and fearful. The allegation was that Obama basically removed many of the top generals, uh, purged the military of anybody who would question him, anybody who wouldn't follow orders, and then replaced them with his people. Now, they're alleging Trump is planning to do the same thing. And again, conservatives were critical of it back in 2012 and 2013. Uh, it happened over the course of several years, and it continued actually after that. Uh, they're probably not as, as critical of that idea now that Trump's coming in. Uh, remember, this does tend to be a political thing. You like it when your guy does it. You don't like it when the other guy does it. Uh, but I should note, my point with this is it's not unusual. Uh, this, has, this does have precedence. And even legally, there's a legal backing to it uh, when it comes to, again, currently serving members of the military and their, their relation with the commander-in-chief. There are actually legal issues with this. Now, of course, it's also possible the military could see the same kind of cost-cutting and budget reviews that are shaping up throughout the entire government right now. They're very likely not going to get left out from that. And remember, like Obama fired like 197 generals, actually more than that, I think, by the end. Trump could go after a lot more than that. Um, look, they're talking about firing like 40,000, 50,000 members of government just in general. Vivek Ramaswamy's talking about getting rid of entire agencies. Um, the Pentagon on this, they just failed another audit on their budget. Task and Purpose said this just recently. So the Department of Defense is still struggling to account for its finances. The department once again failed its annual audit in its expenditures and assets. This markets the seventh straight year of failures uh, since they've started these audits, actually. You know, the Department of Defense has not passed one of the mandatory audits since they were implemented in 2018 under Trump. And they note that Michael McCord, under Secretary of Defense, uh, Comptroller and Chief Financial Officer, announced the latest failure on Friday, November 15th, saying the result was expected. Now, they note that according to McCord, the overall audit earned a disclaimer of opinion, meaning that the Department of Defense failed to provide enough information for auditors to reach a precise and accurate verdict on the finances. In fact, they say, of the 28 separate entities audited, 15 of them all received disclaimers. Now, look, you could write off part of that, and I know on one front in terms of political debate, some people suggest it's, it's black budgets and secret programs, that maybe there's things they cannot disclose, and so when you try to audit them because of security clearances, they're not just going to open the books up to some random auditor coming in, right? Come on. Uh, they're not going to do it. Now, you can believe what you will in terms of whether that's innocent or nefarious. I know there's different takes on that. But just in general, the military is obviously going to have secret issues. They're probably not going to let auditors into that. That's just the reality. Uh, there's also the more surface issues of just all around overspending on things when it comes to military contracts. Uh, this has been told to me personally by some business folks that if you get a military deal, you stack on a couple extra zeros at the end of that number when you tell them the price because they often pay it. Uh, and so it is part of the culture to overcharge the military if you get a military contract uh, because it's hard, it's hard to get those defense contracts because of some of the different audits and reviews you have to go under. They'll, they'll, they'll clip on a couple extra zeros at the end of that number when they send the bill. Well, everyone, that's all for tonight. Thank you for joining us. And as always, please take care of yourselves. Stay informed. Stay free.